this movie embodies a lot about education, but it's really a father-daughter story that I think speaks to everyone. Uh, yeah, uh, the inspiration of a father, the courage of a daughter, I think it's universal. The producers of uh, this movie, Walter Parks and Laurie McDonald, uh, got the rights to the book for a movie with an actress. And when they met with Malala, they realized that no one can play her and that it should be a documentary, and so they called me. Every now and then you come upon a story that actually could go out and do some good in the world, but isn't spinach. It's not something that you're forcing the audience to watch, but it's compelling and emotionally immediate and urgent. And I think that's something we had with Malala, not just in terms of creating an urgency around girls' education, which is very important, but even on a deeper level, I just feel that if Given the preponderance of the sorts of images that Western media put out about Islamic people, I mean, ask yourself, in the last five years, have you seen a single news story about an Islamic individual organization that was not a terrorist? For someone who's 18 years old, who was both a child and an adult at the same time, she was very impressive because her, her answers weren't uh, prefabricated. Her answers weren't poll tested. She basically spoke her heart. She spoke her mind. So it's been extraordinary to see how young women around the world connect to Malala as a role model. And not just young women, I mean women my age, women, you know, all ages, young people, boys, men. You know, I think in this modern time we're looking for authenticity. We want someone that truly believes what they say they believe. And when you look at Malala and her life, you know, she almost paid and has paid a, a terrible price, you know, for her for her belief. It's a very funny, inspiring story and, and, and I think people find that this family, this Muslim family who lives in Birmingham, England is a lot like their own family. And this ordinary girl makes this extraordinary choice to tell her to speak out for what she believes. And she says herself that she had two choices when she was in the Swat Valley in Pakistan, when the Taliban came into her community. And the first was to not speak up, to stay quiet and to be killed. And the second choice was to speak up and then be killed, and she made the second choice. She and her father both recognized as activists and advocates, they felt that it was such a time as this, that it was the time for them to stand up, to be heard, to make their voices heard. So we felt that there could be something inherently positive, just to tell the truth, just to do an accurate, intimate portrayal, not just of Malala, but about this family, who, you know, everyone in that audience would feel would be more than happy to be their neighbor fun, they're funny, they're supportive, they, she fights with her brothers, they disagree about things. And suddenly the, the they hopefully becomes the us.